check me out all right so as you guys know on friday i got my um got my arrow 9a stolen while i was working at shake shack so on saturday the very next day I went and got a new bike sir on oh, i am fucking loving this i've only rode this bike like 20 minutes and i'm telling you right now it's way better than the one i had before and it's so funny when it, when i got my bike stolen which was actually my fault like it was 100 percent my fault i didn't lock the bike i used my um i used my alarm system so the alarm is good but only if you like if you're close to the bike so, so you're able to get back to the bike once the alarm goes off and if you're just running in really quick so you, so you basically gotta be in close proximity and be able to hear it I did neither of those things. I was far into the store. It was a Shake Shack on 40th and 3rd. I was far in the store. And I was on my phone. Listening. Uh, like watching videos. On Facebook. Scrolling. I was just basically just. Really um, procrastinated. Because I had a really, really large order. It was a 28 um, item order from Shake Shack. It was a huge catering order. That order would have been like. $60. Probably more. Because you you know um, Uber Eats hide hide the tips, so yeah, I was like, and it was close to the end of um lunch shift. So I'm like, this is the perfect way to end my lunch shift. I'm getting like fifty dollars this hour, probably sixty, seventy, who knows. So I'm in there just chilling, chilling. Mind you, like twenty minutes passed. I was in there like fifteen, twenty, maybe even twenty five. And then like randomly, I'm like, I hadn't checked on my bike in a while. Like that's something I always do, even if I'm close and the alarm is on. I always like turn around, look to see if my bike is there. I turn around, I couldn't see it. But I remember like where I parked it, it was such an, it was in a spot where you pretty much had to be a specific part in the store to be able to see the bike itself, which was another mistake. I was just making rookie mistakes all day. So yeah, um, I went, I checked, bike was gone. I didn't, I didn't even, like I circled the block but I didn't even bother. I'm like, who knows when they took the bike? Like, I've been in the store like 15, maybe 20 minutes, right? They could have took the bike like four minutes. I was in there. So I'm like, I have no idea when it was actually taken. She was staring into my entire soul. But yeah, I have no idea when they took, when the bike was gone, how long it was gone. So I, I just gave up on it. I'm like, whatever. I needed a new, I wanted a new bike anyway. Like, the Arrows are really good utility bike. Like, they're good delivery bikes. They last long. You could customizing a lot of ways like like the bike rack that thing came in clutch so many times like i was able I, like i use it as, it's mainly for um pizzas but i used it to put like giant sushi platters which i did like 50 dollar orders on there i used to bring cases of water because you know all the delivery people they they skip on those orders because they can't carry it me i could carry it easily it was really uncomfortable riding the these suspensions aren't that good on there. It only has a front suspension, which is decent, except that I work in New York. So we have a lot of potholes over here. You need like dual suspensions. So the the front suspension by itself was definitely not enough. It was definitely not enough. So if you, if you go over a bump, you're feeling like 95% of the bump, even with those suspensions and it, because of that and like the positioning of the pedals my knees like over the, like the last like half a year i'm gonna say my knees started hurting really bad on that bike and even though this bike is sh technically shorter like my foot is in such a position that on the ride over here it's not it wasn't uncomfortable at all like i didn't feel the pain in, in my knee knees and because i rode my friend jeffrey Seron and i went around the block maybe three to five minutes and my kneecaps were, were exploding out to come back. So yeah, that's the story of how I got my bike stolen. It's funny, like people were, people were more mad about it than me. <laughs> like I, I'm re I was reading everybody's comments and people were like, did you have an air tag? I'm like, bro, it's an arrow bike. I'm not air tagging an arrow bike. If they steal it, they can have it. In fact, I would get off the bike and be like, all right, bro, just, just, just take me to the train. I needed a new one anyway. But anyway, we about to go ride this sir on around the city.
Sorry, did you guys see the clip of the uh, the group ride going on? I this is the first I've ever seen a group ride with like a police escort. Usually they're just out there, just in the wild. But one thing I'm not used to on this bike is like the turning. I had I'm not used to riding bigger bikes like this. Uh, all my bikes were the size of like the Arrow. Yeah, they're all like the Arrow size bikes. So like it was easier turning. You could do like sharper turns on this. I gotta like be careful. But it's been easy to turn on here. But it's like I don't want to get like too too comfortable on this thing. I mean with the turnings, at least not yet. You know, I don't want to like overestimate my abilities and end up wiping out. But so far, it's been pretty comfortable, it's pretty sta stable ride. Literally, no complaints yet. Got it, boys. Got it, boys. Guys, I'm still in eco mode. This thing is taking off. Currently, the bike is still in eco mode. I learned my lesson months ago when I rode in another Ceron. Uh, if you're gonna start in sport, you gotta lean forward. Otherwise, you're gonna see the sky real quick. One thing I don't like is a stock horn. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what the hell is that? I gotta get the old horn that I had. That super loud car horn. Yeah, that's what I need on this thing. It has a monster light though. I'm doing a bad camera work right here. But yeah, the light on it is really good. I had another light also, but I prefer that one just because I think this one is brighter, but that one you could change the modes. So like you could go into like a dim mode, a flashing mode, like the strobe lighting. And then you could have the uh, the regular just high beams, which the high beams on this thing is crazy. Like when I tell you, I forgot I don't have a fluffy on my GoPro. So the wind is going to be crazy. But the high beams that I had on the, um, the old bike, man, I tell you, cars would see my high beam from a block and a half down the street and they would just wait for me like that never happens you know like they'll just like cut you off at, like an intersection like i had that's the first time i've ever ever experienced a car waiting for me to pass usually they'll try to like they'll just either cut around you or like they'll try to cut past you but then realize they're gonna hit you and then they stop but yeah man this bike whew. i was going over i hope the see it's, it's GoPro has a stabilization, so like if it experiences shaking, it's not gonna uh, re resemble in the video. But if it didn't have that stabilization, you just saw like the bumps I was going over. And like, I'm telling you guys, this bike is hungry because it ate those bumps. I didn't feel a single pothole that I went over this entire time. Not even, I remember on the arrow, you hit a pothole, you gotta hold on or you gotta like stand up on the pedal. You, you guys can't see in the, in the videos, but a lot of times when I'm riding on the uh, arrow, I will stand on the pedals just because I needed, yeah, just because I needed to um, pretty much like balance so I don't fall if I hit a bump. And the potholes here, some of them are, some of them are like this big, like they're, they're very tiny and incredibly steep. So it's like you think you're safe if you go over that little bump until you hit it and then you, you end up like wobbling off the floor basically. Guys, from now on, you're gonna have to call me Adrian Ronster, bro. I'm taking Siron's name.
I get a sit around for, for I get a sit around for 20 minutes and I don't know how to act. I'm I'm the young black uh, surroundster, bro. Except I'm not gonna be popping wheelies though. I'm 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 cool on that. I feel like eventually I will. I feel like everybody say they're not gonna do that, and then one day they get bored. Cause I remember when I first rode a Saron, I said, "Ain't no way I'm going to sport mode." What I did, I went in sport mode the same day. <laughs> All right, brakes, nice. So one thing about these brakes, which I'm gonna have to get used to, on my arrow, the brakes, the brake system that I had set up, it was basically in accordance to how much brake pads you have left. So the the closer you got to pulling the the brake lever down, that means the more worn out your brake pads were. On this is the opposite. It's like it goes down close to the, um, it goes down close to the grips no matter how much brake pads you have. I noticed that on my friend Seron as well. I thought he was running out of brake pads the entire time, but that's just how they set up this brake system. And also like, usually people make the Seron quiet. This one isn't quiet, listen to this. Alright, so I've been trying to force myself to get out my old bike habit because you know since it has slower like acceleration and speed overall I'm used to riding and like as like a regular um, biker like in between cars like the space between the parked and the um, and the moving traffic but this bike I don't have to I could I could command the street I could command my own lane I'm out of here this can't be a this can't be a Suron video without going into sport mode. I'm nervous as hell. The reason I'm nervous is because this bike has way more torque. Well, I, I don't know about way more, but it has more torque than the previous Suron that I, I rode. So, and even then, the sport mode is crazy because if you don't lean forward, you're, I'm telling you, you're going to be seeing the sky. So I'm going to wait till all these cars pass just in case. A white out. Whoo! Nervous to sell. All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's taking off. It's taking off. All right, there we go. Oh. It was lifting up. It was trying to wheelie. Oh my! Oh, oh my God! Nah, that's not for me. Switch that off. I lied. Take that off. Bro, I was barely tapping it. And my front wheel wouldn't stay on the ground. Nah, that's not for me, bro. Not yet. Check it out. That's my high school. My old high school. Midwood High. This place was baller. This shit had two buildings. Connected by a glass annex. I hated this place. <laughs> I hated this place, man. High school is where I first found out that the information we learn will never be useful in life. And I just stopped caring. I went from like an honor student to like barely passing. So I'm like, oh wait, we're never gonna use this shit? Then what's the point of me learning it? And I just never gave a fuck. I kind of want to go on sport again, but I'm not trying to bust my ass. All right, so we're on Avenue X and Nostrand. So to the left of me is my old junior high school. Oh yeah, right now I'm, I'm just riding around. I have no destination in mind. But yeah, on the left of my, ju my junior high school, uh, Shell Bank. 
lot of good memories there. You know, for most people, like, uh, high school is like their favorite out of like all the years in school. But for me, it was definitely junior high school. Way too much memories over there. Shout bank on my right. And then right across from me was the high school. Um, Sheepshead Bay. So it, it was it was really funny, right? It was like you would graduate junior high school here and then walk across the street to your high school. Like that was so funny. I remember I didn't want to go to Sheepshead Bay just because of that. So instead I went to Midwood High. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> I'm about to leave and then just go right across the street. Plus Midwood was like in walking distance. It was like a five minute walk from my house. So it's the entrance right here. The Man, a lot of fucking, yo, this place is nostalgic as hell to me. I remember when I was here, when I was a younger, when I was a little lad, this place was ghetto as hell. Now I came, now I come back years later, there's a Starbucks over there. That's how you know it's not the hood no more. So Starbucks, come on now. But I ain't complaining. See, the only part of gentrification I don't like is the raising the rent. Aside from that, y'all could do all the other shit. We like Starbucks too. Nah, let's see. Now I'm saying like, who doesn't like a Starbucks every once in a while? Who doesn't like paying ten dollars for a cup of medium, a cup of uh, mid coffee? Wait, I should probably wrap up this video because it would just be like forty-five minutes an hour of me riding around. I've literally just been like choosing random blocks and just going there. I just happen to be going past places that I've been to, like my high school. I was over there. I was like, all right, let me just show this off. And my junior high. But, ooh, I can't wait to do some deliveries on this thing. Can't wait to deliver $4 orders on this $5,000 Sauron. Right. 